This evening, there's a decision to share in a volatile custody case involving a seven year old's gender. All new at six o'clock, Alana Otler, live for us right outside the George Allen Courthouse in Dallas, to sort it all out for us and give us the background information. Alana? Doug, today a judge granted joint custody to parents, saying the state didn't see a need or reason to intervene in parental decisions. But outside the courtroom, this case has taken on a life of its own. The central question being, should a seven-year-old live as a boy or as a girl? Today marked the end of a high-profile custody battle. But in the court of public opinion, the debate has been raging for months. Oh, you're a boy, right? No. I'm a girl. This is video posted by Jeffrey Younger, a North Texas father who says his child, who was born as a boy, should live as a boy. But the child's mother, pediatrician Andrew Julas, says their child presents as a girl. He's enrolled in school under a fake girl's name, and uh, his teachers and everyone says he is a girl. The parents have been fighting a legal battle for years, until this week, when a jury granted the mother sole custody. But instead of upholding the decision, Judge Kim Cooks gave parents joint custody of the child and the child's twin brother. The state of Texas has no compelling interest to justify such interfer interference as to enter orders requiring the father to affirm the child and honor the child's choices. The case has ignited debate over how parents should navigate gender identity. Governor Greg Abbott, Senator Ted Cruz, and Attorney General Ken Paxton even weighed in, asking state agencies to investigate allegations the mother proposed chemical and surgical treatments for the child. But today, Judge Cooks denounced those rumors. No Texas judge or Texas court, nor the 255th Family Court or any of its judges, has ordered the chemical castration, puberty blockers, hormone blockers or any transgender reassignment surgery on this child to become a female. The judge ruled the court would not be intervening in parental decisions, only ordering certain issues, including medical procedures, be made in agreement. But Judge Cook did address the parents' previous actions. She read Georgiulis's own testimony, stating she may have overaffirmed the child's identity. The judge also noted Younger created a website publicizing the case, then invited a conservative news crew to interview his kids at home. The father finds comfort in public controversy and attention surrounded by his use of unfounded facts and is thus motivated by financial gain of approximately $139,000 to which he has received at the cost of the protection and privacy of his children. At this hour, we have not heard from the mother's side yet, and after the hearing, neither parent commented on the outcome. But, Doug, what we need to remember about this case is at the heart of it is a child and the child's brother. That is exactly why the judge made a specific ruling and a specific order, and that is family counseling, counseling for everybody involved. The hope is that the healing can start for the children in spite of this public scrutiny. Live at the George R. Allen Courthouse, Alana Altler, CBS 11 News.